So this is a great question from Mark. He says, what are your best tips for keeping people engaged in online Teams calls? Um, Shocking so, God caller? <laughs> Uh, just, uh, I, 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 I'm constantly trying to improve my personality, you know, <laughs> keep you people it. engaged. <laughs> There's a lot of work to do. I know that'll, Mike, that'll take a while. Mike yeah. is constantly, you're helping me with that. You're, you're mentoring me. <laughs> don't have calls. If you don't need to have calls, cover interesting material, I, provide value. You know, one of the favorite things is that have an agenda and walk through that. Like, I hate the whole thing. Like, we've got an hour book, so we must use that entire hour. If you have an agenda of what you're trying to accomplish and get through that in 30 minutes, it was like, all right, and that's it. Any final items? And we'll wrap early and go. You're done. Not Don't fill the time. Also, limit your audience, right? Do, do we need to invite 800 people to talk about a topic that only four people care about? Maybe we could record that and publish it out for the other 396 people who don't care. Well, let me ask this question. The, the two examples that you just gave, you both, Sharon and Christian gave, how is that any different than like in-person meetings? I mean, you should have an agenda at an in-person meeting. You right. know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have a lot of side conversations in an in-person meeting. It's, it's running a Teams meeting is not a lot unlike running an in-person meeting. I mean, they should follow the same. Now, if if you can't engage people in an in-person meeting, yeah, you have a little bit more distractions with the online meeting because they have, you know, multiple windows. They got they got their messenger going on. They got their yeah. phone sitting here. They got all that. In an in in-person meeting, you know how you have some people that'll sit there and type on their laptops while you're in a meeting. Pet peeve, annoyment, annoying with me. Uh, but or looking at their phones or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you have the same issue magnified in, in an online meeting. Yeah. But the basic, you know, having a effective meeting principles, I think, still apply. Correct. Okay. <laughs> but can I can I start this by saying we, we should have said at the beginning of, well, it depends on <laughs> what I mean. Because for most of what we're talking about, like a team meeting going in there and let's say there's, you know, 10 of us in there, you know, being focused, having a shared understanding of here's our goals, here's the outline, not waste people's times, being respectful of that, moving through, what are our outcomes, like all of those kinds of things, which are like project management 101, meeting 101. If you're doing a longer session, if you are instructing, uh, you're presenting on something, which it's much more of that that presentation mode, if that's kind of what Mark is asking, like that side of it, like there are things to do. I've seen some people that are more on the education side of you know industry, the field, that do things where they, they break up their content. They make sure that they're not eye chart PowerPoint slides, oh, that yeah. they have visuals and you know, specific things. I love for classes with students where you can actually go, and I love when this is done well, um, have a presentation that's broken up by short video clips and then gets to a certain point. And you can actually have a, a form created where you quiz people and insert quiz at intervals within the presentation to mm -hmm. get people then to, that they have to go respond to these polls, to these surveys and answer questions to see if they're paying attention. Again, again, I think these could be done in an in-person meeting as well. I think what sure. you're saying, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they apply to the same, but sure, doing the whole forms and polling and stuff, that's a lot easier online. Uh, because otherwise people have to get out a phone and they have to go to a website and they have to, you know, or they do the raise hands, you know, let's, you know, whoever's done that kind of a thing. I am working on a top secret project. I will share a little <laughs> bit. It's IOT related that sends basically um, you send it to all your employees. They affix it to the bottom of their chairs. You're telling us about it. So it's not top secret. Anymore. I know it was previously known as top secret. I now use like the same symbol Prince had of previously known as top secret. Uh, no, but it, it sends an electrical, mild electrical, mild electrical shock. 
to people that aren't paying attention. The shocking dog collar. I said that <laughs> first. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So what I hear Mike saying is that this is a facilitation question, not a team's question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of it is. Look, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to go and dazzle it. But I, I like I jokingly said at the beginning is have a better personality. <laughs> you know? yeah. But there's something to be said yeah, about coach. There's something to be said about working on your presentation skill. Get third party opinions on whether you are boring people to tears <laughs> every time yeah. you open your mouth and, yeah. and develop your skill set to get better at presenting. And include feedback options so that your yeah. audience can participate. Yes, the, that's the key. You, you want to break down barriers and try and turn that top-down meeting where the organizer is the only one talking into a, a place where you can have a conversation about it. Of course, when it's appropriate, time and setting appropriate, but conversations are the best meetings. Okay. You know what else works? Food. Free, yeah, free food. <laughs> and, well, free and, food. and money. <laughs> food know, or money. So, yeah. yeah. Food or money. I mean, I can definitely share my address. Or, or elect <laughs> to send food, money, Starbucks food, gift cards. Money, electrical shocks. I, well, you know, it's again, it depends. <laughs> we prefer reward-based systems. Yeah. 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 Well, Pavlov's dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's right. I just there in the meeting every every few minutes, ding a bell, and then you know give people little you Thank know you, sir, have another bits of food. You know, Thank come you, open sir, your mouth. There. You represent the lollipop guild. <laughs> well, it is true though. It is absolutely true. You know, um, in the non virtual world, when we're in person and we're having meetings, and I've done a ton of facilitation stuff, um, I'm the first person to bring a bag of candy, right? Because it's absolutely true. Like, as people answer questions, throw them a piece of candy, yeah. right? Um, we can't do that in the virtual we are world. Or, and so there is right. there is some things. There are some things that are mm -hmm. different in the way that we facilitate virtually versus facilitating in the real world. But ultimately, Mike's point is is you know taken in terms of if you're gonna if you have good tendencies in a, a real world meeting, you should pull those over into teams. But there are some limitations to that for sure. Well, and, and we're joking around around this, but I mean this is an important topic. And in fact, I've even with some of like the SharePoint Saturdays and other events from time to time, uh, where some of the organizers of, the, of those events have offered as a session, like how to present sessions. Mm -hmm. So if you want to strengthen your your skills around presenting, which I think is a great thing, we need more of that out in just community. And so if that's something you need to work on, I mean, one of the things that you can do, especially within the MVP and RD communities, is if there's somebody that you really like their presenting style, generally RDs and MVPs were very approachable and say, hey, you know, I really like your style around this. I like your style, Mike. There, yeah. No, uh, but is you know you could reach out to them. Any of us would say, you know, sure. You know, hey, like, hey, could you mentor me on this? Could I, you know have a conversation? And we'd all, I, uh, answering for all of us, Mike will probably shake his head no. He refuses this kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> but help people within the community to uh, improve oh. their skills and mentor. <laughs> In fact, a lot of the conferences. I don't know why Mike is so against mentoring, but uh, I, I guess we'll take that offline. But. You have to I, stop because this is going to go against my MVP award if you keep pushing this <laughs> narrative. I'll add a smiley into the text. People will know I'm joking. I do know that there's a lot of, well, I, w I don't know a lot of, I've noticed that there are conferences that are offering the ability for new speakers to come in yeah. and yep. have a buddy have somebody who can kind of review their presentation before they do it the first time. Yeah. Um, and I'm noticing this in user groups. I'm noticing this at conferences. And I think it's really important because there's kind of this thing where you think like you got to know what you're doing to be able to present. And I think it's fantastic that they're offering these tracks and they're offering these buddy systems and things for people to come in. And we do that in our user group. So we always recommend it. I'll actually go talk to people and be like, hey, if you want to do this, come. We'll look at your session beforehand. We'll give you some tips and tricks. Um, yep. It's okay if you feel kind of clunky the first couple of times, um, but I, I'm really happy to see that people are starting to help with that. Yeah, and uh, user groups are the best awesome. place to go and and to do that. That's what it's meant to be for, mm -hmm. to allow people that are out in industry, you know, in the field that are not 
professional presenters to come in and share their work and get feedback and start that process. And it, it just takes practice. It takes time. For most of us, it doesn't come naturally. It's mm-hmm. something that we learn that skill over time. I want to say one one word of caution, though, is is like you had mentioned, everybody has their own different style of presenting. And if they've been presenting for a while, depending on who is mentoring you, you don't necessarily, you know, you may want to do your own thing, you know, yeah. put your own, you know, mix in your own personality. You don't, don't try and mimic, you know, the person that you think is the the best presenter because they may be the best presenter in your eyes, <laughs> but they may <laughs> not be <laughs> like, you know, Christian, there's one or two people who think he is, but you know, the rest of the world pretty much just says we, you know, we don't need that. So well, that's why there are laws in certain countries because yeah. it's exactly that. So I'm aware of that. <laughs> I think this is uh, a, a, a very important subject that we've been talking about as we move out of the, you know, how to make a meeting engaging in teams. <laughs> yeah. Like for most people, especially in IT, to get up and to talk in front of a room and to be articulate and engaging. It's so it's so contrary to what most of us are by nature, you know, introverted coding away. So for a traditional technical person to be outgoing, like it's a massive accomplishment. Um, and, and many of us have presented and uh, as a courtesy to the person who's who's got the floor, we all disable or our, our, our turn off our video cameras. And so the presenter now is just seeing initials across the top of the team screen and they're talking to the little dot on their monitor for their webcam and they're just like they're Mm -hmm. trying to be engaged with no feedback and it is so difficult for presenters so now I've this is just a a thing that I like to do now is make a point of giving feedback during the meeting not interrupting not talking but a thumbs up thank you Mike and like I think it's also incumbent upon viewers to help talk, especially when you're an IT person and you're not used to this like I am. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons like we just utilized it and I use it. We all just have used it now, but you know, the emoticons and the other things throughout to provide that feedback. That's why I love things like having those real time polling to, uh, you know, to, to have the emoticons, the other things to feel the you know, the comments and the chat and the side and share with things. So there's whether you're, you know, direct or indirect feedback throughout. Um, so you think about as a marketing guy, I mean, that's why we constantly do things, whether we're for a company or within an industry research projects where you do, you know, polling, you do surveys, you do focus groups, you do like all of those kinds of things to get feedback, finding out ways to integrate those types of feedback loops into your presentation is a great way to get that level of engagement up. I still think, and again, it's true whether in person or online, it's it's uh, because I've watched presentations where it's a guy sitting up in front of the room with his face in a laptop, never looking up once, but microphone walking through a very technical demo. And it was riveting because of the technology and what they had built, you know, and what they were demonstrating. So know your audience, know the room, read the room, Uh, read read the the room. room. Yeah. (laughs) And be, and, and if you're finding that people are, you know, no one's coming on camera, no one's providing feedback around that being very concise in and being structured in and maybe have a shorter meeting. Well, and you both have a really good point in terms of, you know, feedback. I would definitely say also, um, I really encourage people to be on camera when whatever meetings I'm doing, whatever presentations I'm doing, um, because Norm, to your point, we try to be kind by going off. But frankly, I would prefer that everybody stays on their camera and we all focus on the content that we're presenting or we can spotlight people for anybody who doesn't know about the spotlight feature um, in teams. Everybody can be on camera. We can simply spotlight the person that we want to pay attention to. Um, and that will kind of keep them at the top of the list. It'll make it so that everybody knows who's who's talking. Um, but nobody really wants to talk to a blank screen. And so I think that encouraging people and giving them the permission to be on camera. And this, I know this is a is a weird 
different topic, right? Um, because we don't want to get into the discussion of should we force people to be on camera, but I definitely want to provide the encouragement permission for people to be on camera. I do find in my clients that they are when they're on camera, we tend to have more engaging meetings. We tend to get more done. We tend to be more productive. We build more better relationships as opposed to the clients where um, we're just simply you know, all talking and all you can see is the letter bubbles. So I think it's a good point, Norm.